yeah, you know, I was like, oh, what are we going to talk about today? I think I'm... Because I, I found that, like, when we tried to, you know, sit down and record and, and chat, um, it's been tough in quarantine because, like, whenever my grandma calls me, she's like, oh, what have you been up to? And I'm like, same shit, just been sitting at home. My, my <laughs> biggest adventure was going to Trader Joe's yesterday. Yeah. It was 40 minutes away. I was excited about that. That's I drove adventure. 40 minutes to go to a Trader Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. They're opening a Trader Joe's closer to me, but it's not open yet. And I don't know when I will get to partake of Trader Joe's sweet, sweet sucker. So <laughs> I will have to drive uh, 40 something minutes away to go get, um, you know, my frozen gyoza. I think that the checkout person at Trader Joe's probably thought I was insane. I don't think I bought like a single thing that you would consider like real food. <laughs> it was just like treats and like frozen meals and stuff like that no and so I I felt... food is. you live literally could not be worse than me because i also went to trader joe's on like i think tuesday and i bought three bottles of six dollar wine <laughs> okay that's hilarious um yeah, I didn't look at the alcohol because I think if I brought more alcohol into the, the house, my dad would kill me um, for reasons I can't quite fathom. Um, but I uh, bought two six packs of Rheingeist beer at Kroger because they like to make limited edition things and I wanted to try them before they went away. Um, <laughs> so I got two packs of two different beers. <laughs> and uh, Dad now sp speaks of them disparagingly. <laughs> so I don't, I mean, <laughs> that's my life is uh, buying a six pack of beer and having to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get a mini fridge. Pretend that you're a college I, you, student. No, you know, the funny thing is I literally have a fridge downstairs. <laughs> and not once did I ever think, oh, I can use this to escape scorn and criticism um, for liking an alcoholic beverage from time to time. I was just like, I gotta, I gotta face God and walk backwards into hell, you know? <laughs> um, and never once did I think, oh, I can just not do that. I'm many things. I, I, I can't but, believe but, you live in a house that has two fridges and one of them is not the beer fridge. I... Like, that's... I'd yeah <laughs> i feel like the midwestern beer fridge is a really hollowed institution um but it's it is not the beer fridge and it is where i keep my mountain dew um and my arizona tea chode cans because aldi has <laughs> the 12 packs for cheap but they're the little 12 ounce mm -hmm. chode cans right yeah i, I have a 12 and pack of those Arizonas. as well and i feel like a cuck when i drink them <laughs> I know. <laughs> the first time I pulled one out, I was like, what the hell is this? It's a tiny little peepee -pee Did you baby not expect can. them? Did you not expect um, them? Yeah, didn't you buy it? So I like I knew that they were going to be 12 ounces, but I just didn't expect like the visceral emotion of seeing an incredibly small <laughs> Arizona tea can. <laughs> like, it visually it looks the exact same, but it's like somebody hit it with a fucking supervillain shrink ray. <laughs> And it's just really <laughs> funny and and weird. Um, it really be looks if like they you made them took... small but tall, like Red Bull containers. I'm not sure if it would be better if they were differently shaped. <laughs> if they were like the Slims that um, European countries have, no, that would be better because the way they exist now, it it feels like I've taken an Arizona tea, but somebody has taken a very sharp sword and cut it directly in half, and now I have <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's ha it's been fucking cut off at the kneecaps. <laughs> but, ugh, I just I have to just wonder what the person at at what people at Trader Joe's you know see when they see somebody buying like two packages of chocolate chip milk bread and frozen mac and cheese. Okay, they probably just <laughs> think you're a college student. <laughs> That's true, and I appreciate that that would be a charitable interpretation. 
I do always feel like some kind of weird college student when I go grocery shopping for not my normal amount of grocery things because I just buy <laughs> like the snack food that I ran out of because I yeah, always yeah, underbuy yeah. snack food. <laughs> it's like, well, I have right, purchased a like... bag of barbecue chips, kimchi, and nutritional yeast. <laughs> Who do you think I am? Uh, knowing you, that's extremely accurate. <laughs> <laughs> If I had to, if you were like, pick three things that I buy at Trader Joe's or like at the store on a on an off you know week, those would be the things I would say. Like a bag of chips, nutritional yeast, <laughs> and kimchi. I love that for you. I am um, a very predictable person in a strange you are way. Completely a parody of yourself. Mm -hmm. I I love that. You're so earnestly crunchy and i appreciate that <laughs> i think you meet a lot of people who are crunchy who are performatively crunchy and who don't enjoy it but they're like mm, i eat granola every morning and i'm better than you or whatever but you're like you wake up and you're like ah granola my beloved um <laughs> it's and good. i feel like you it earnestly enjoy like hiking <laughs> And I appreciate that sort of uh, truth to self. <laughs> I do earnestly enjoy just going around and then walking. Yeah, like that's 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 crunchiness that comes from the soul, um, <laughs> as opposed to is walking crunchiness. Considered crunchy. I think like really enjoying going for a walk is a little crunchy. Yeah, walking. Not, so you are not walking. you are not the base that can be measured on this. <laughs> Uh, okay, I I understand that. I understand that I dislike Astral walking a disproportionate amount. Listen, I know. I understand that I dislike walking like a disproportionate amount, but like, I still think it's a little bit like, oh, I'm gonna go for a walk after lunch is like a slightly, is a slightly crunchy behavior. <laughs> it's at the very least an extremely I like. I guess my grandma is crunchy. <laughs> then. <laughs> So the thing is, well, if you do old people behaviors in your 20s to 30s, I think you can be considered crunchy. I Yeah, I think that's sort of the, like you if you go to bed early and you go for walks in the afternoon, which are also old people behaviors, but you're you're 23, you're crunchy. Okay. <laughs> old people are morning people and coincidentally so are a lot of crunchy people <laughs> my grandmother starts the episode before we just keep making fun of me yeah <laughs> sure it's fine i'll let you guys make fun of me next time <laughs> i think i think you just made fun of yourself that's fair episode hold on episode. i have to clean up my i'm gonna make a very loud noise i have to clean up my keyboard <laughs> why did why you do that before i just noticed that there was nastiness in it i'm so sorry <laughs> i mean i this this tracks <laughs> <laughs> can you leave that in sure sure i mean i can leave put it, it in before the want. actual intro starts Sure. <laughs> like after the music's <laughs> done. <it. laughs> sure. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right. I'm gonna start the intro. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. My laptop fell asleep. All right. <laughs> Good God. All right. Hello and welcome to Wiki Boys, the podcast where three friends explore the wonderful world of fandom wiki pages. I am your host today, Alex, and I use he/him pronouns. I'm Aster, and I use she and they pronouns. I'm Rick, I use they, them pronouns. I'm very tired. Today, 
while Rook is very tired, we are going to continue our unofficial Super Hulak series and talk about <laughs> oh, Doctor you Who. Spoiled it. I spoiled it. Oh no. Spoiler, we can put this out on last. Can figure out. <laughs> <laughs> that's even more chaotic um no in case you couldn't figure out by the fact that last week was or last episode was supernatural and this week is doctor who <laughs> um, kind of like to do trends historically speaking yeah, it we, means we're gonna lose one of these episodes and i'm saying it now oh, no, so don't we don't that. hex ourselves astro did no. you start the backup i did i did okay. it's been re- it's been recording this whole time um but yes, today today is Doctor Who. Um, Alex and I are, are co-hosting slightly. I think we both went and got links, so we'll see how many of these line up. Because mm-hmm. um, we did not talk to each other about what we had, and I think that's going to make it funnier. Hilariously, um, we were like, yeah, we should combine links after, and then proceeded not to do that. Mm-hmm. It's normal. We are like it's this. It's normal to do this. <laughs> we are normal to do um, this. Um, would you like me but, to start by sharing, or would you like to start and or talk about our go mileage? Ahead. We should talk about mileage. Yeah. <laughs> we should talk about mileage, and Alex, I think you can go first. Yeah. Um, so for my mileage, I started when the series started up again with the Ninth Doctor. I didn't watch anything before that. Um, and then proceeded up till about midway through 12, when it, nobody oh, wow. watched Jeez. Doctor Who anymore. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so my trajectory was pretty similar. I started right about when the ni- like I didn't start when the ninth doctor. Um, Which one was the ninth? Know, was that, that was like, No, that no, was um... that tenth. Christopher Eccleston is nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I believe that season was like two thousand nine. I was not watching in two thousand nine. Um, but yes, I also started with reboot. Who I've never seen any of the other ones because I'm not a middle aged British person. <laughs> Um, and I stopped watching somewhere in, I think, season six. I was looking through the seasons last night, trying to, like, remember what the hell I'd seen. Um, and somewhere around five or six, the memory gets kind of hazy. I know that I never, like, saw Peter Capaldi's Doctor, um, but I was, my finger was enough on the pulse and I had friends who were into it when Peter Capaldi took over as the doctor. So that's about, I probably stopped watching about a season or two before you. Yeah. I'm going to, I won't lie. I don't remember anything of Capaldi. Um, but I did I watch it. He's like a, he's just like, like a grumpy old dude. He's just a grumpy <laughs> old dude. Um, but yes, that's, My, that's our yeah. mileage. My mileage with Doctor Who is I saw like a single episode when I was like 14 while helping my friend with a homestuck cosplay. Ooh, <laughs> the power contained within that sentence alone, I think, could level a building. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Like, so part of mine was that I was always watching with my mom because it was one of those things where um, we had a show that we all watched together for mm. I don't know reasons. We also watched. Um, uh, Sherlock together like that, which is a very weird experience now that I look back on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, think... Glee. <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's extremely normal for teenagers who were on Tumblr to try to burden their families with the shows that they were into. Like, that was me and my yeah. mother and Supernatural. We watched ten seasons of that fucking show together. Like... I think it's normal for children to do this. I think it's normal for children to do this. Um, but yes, moving on to the wiki, uh, we're going to be using TARDIS.Fandom.com. It seems um, to be the most complete, and it's also um, very charming. I, I want to say it's very charming and also extremely like well done. All of the like, I'm on the the front page, and all of the pictures and like the pictures that have links are rendered in sort of a grayscale, like, sepia tone. And then when oh, you cool. hover over them, they become colorful. It's yeah. extremely well done. It's a very well done um, wiki. I, I praise the maintainers and um, mm-hmm. everybody who's contributed code. You've done a good job. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and if you hover over the images, it tells you how many kilobytes the image is. That's just funny to me. Um, I love that that happens. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think the first thing that I want to send, uh, just to get us started, is the canon policy on this wiki. I which... did not see this. Mm hmm. So if you're on the, uh. the front page, there's a little like yellow box that's like, luckily, there's no such thing as canon in this fandom. And the words no such thing as canon have a hyperlink. And I'm like, hello. Hello. So I read this whole page. And to summarize, the thing about Doctor Who is I'll read this uh, this paragraph here, which is the second one under Doctor Who and canon. In fact, the DWU, Doctor Who universe, isn't even wholly owned by one entity. Um, due to oddities in British television practices, the DWU is primarily owned by the BBC, but individual elements within it, like the Daleks, Autons, and even individual characters like Nyssa and the Brigadier, may be owned by individual authors. Okay. This highly complex legal situation makes it impossible for the BBC to define a canon, because they simply don't have the right to wholly define it. Daleks can appear without any other DWU elements. John Benton has been in a story without the Doctor. And K-9 can get his own television series in Australia, regardless of the BBC's wishes. <laughs> so, like, that's how fucked the canon of Doctor Who is. Is like Fuck yeah, baby, no laws. Yeah, it's no laws very, right. like, no laws. There's a policy of, like, three major types of article. Real world, in-universe, and non-DWU. And I still don't quite grok the difference between that it seems that real world Mm. articles are about like here are the series and the episodes and the books and whatever yeah in universes are like things that exist in this world that in universes like characters and whatever interact with yeah yeah and then non-dwu are Articles which flow from officially licensed stories which are not considered valid sources. Okay. Which is so difficult. It's, so, it, so it's like anything that's like Purple Haze feedback. Yes. I think yeah. it's, it's officially like, licensed, but it's not quote unquote canon. Widely considered sort of non canon, but still like sanctioned and um, useful to have. Yeah, it's very much like uh, how Wikipedia has sort of like the canon and the legends information, um, though that is a different story because Disney just fucking nuked the EU, which is probably <laughs> smart at this point. But yeah, yeah. I mean, gestures at Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, they should nuke Marvel. I've, they've tried. Anyways, they that's not what this episode's it. about. Um, so I just wanted to show this off because this canon policy is sort of bonkers just because like the situation is bonkers, but it's extremely strong to have this in place. Um, yeah. and I think it's a good baseline for sort of talking about Dr. Who as a whole and sort of understanding what a sort of cultural entity it is. Um, mm-hmm. uh, much like imperialism, it's one of Britain's greatest exports. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> I think that sort of it helps you wrap your head around just how big it is and how long it's been around. Um, and also, I think it, it sort of leads into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is like the sort of the core crux of why this show has been around for so long. And it, the, the yeah. like whole thing about the doctor regenerating and where you just you can just kill the doctor and then light shoots out of his fucking hands and he just becomes a new person with a new actor. Yeah, it's smart as hell. It's so smart. And I don't know how, like, so few things have managed to handle that seamlessly. I think my favorite Yeah, I'm franchise, surprised that's not a more common formula. The only other franchise that seems to manage that as well is James Bond. And I don't know how that works. Like, I don't know what it is yeah, about... Yeah, I would... What, I would almost slot JoJo into that Venn diagram, but it's, like, different. No, there is absolutely yeah. weird overlap between things like JoJo, Doctor Who, and James Bond, which is a wild list of things to put together. <laughs> I think maybe even a fourth circle to that is something that's, like, episodic, or, or like, something that's self-contained within seasons, but has, like, the same actors, like, American Horror Story, where mm. it's the same actors, and I think that they're at this point in the series, there's probably some sort of 
uh, uh, indication of like a shared universe, but the biggest connection is just that it's like the same actors every season and they just play different <laughs> people. Um, That's fun. But uh, yeah, the doctor, let's fucking talk about it. <laughs> um, um, let's talk about first the hilarious fucking list on um, the bio box. Um, oh, of grandparents, the doctor's grandmothers, the doctor's grandfather, mother, the doctor's mother, father, the doctor's father, sisters, the doctor's sister, brother, Irving Baxtell. <laughs> all these just, the doctor it's has so kids. Funny. Yes. He, doctor yes. Fox. I don't know anything about that. Um. <laughs> Jenny was the daughter of the 10th Doctor who was artificially created from his DNA by a... What the fuck? It what gets, the hell? There's... There's weird. There's weird. Oh, wait a minute. I believe the Doctor's daughter is that episode... Uh, sorry to just jump into this. Is the episode where they're like, oh, we've been fighting for generations, but it's like that freaky clone machine that just pumps people out and so generations has been like a month mm-hmm. <laughs> um that's yeah. a good episode of it's Doctor a good Who episode actually that that twist where you realize like oh <laughs> yeah they've been fighting four generations oh God. but it's been I... like a month <laughs> that's really funny i'm just i just i open i opened the page the doctor's children i see the doctor's children included 13 children with his wife patience what the fuck i don't I oh, think... this looks like comic material or something. Yeah. Oh, I think it is. I think there is Jeez. comics material that I have never touched that I don't know anything about. Also, here's the page for yeah. the Do- uh, Doctor's Daughter TV series. What? TV story. Sorry. Yeah. I missed this book. So I think that's I think that's one of the interesting things, actually. If you look at like the sources for things, it'll be like TV, and then it'll have the episode or prose, and it'll have the book or whatever or comic I love that they use prose and not novel or book I think it's incredibly funny um sorry um I am still looking at this page for the doctor and I'm noticing that his in-laws uh one of them is Henry the (laughs) eighth yeah um I don't remember that he did marry Uh, Elizabeth the first at one point (laughs) <laughs> okay. Spouses: Patience, Scarlet, Elizabeth the First, Marilyn Monroe, Cleopatra, and River Song. Okay. What the fuck? Okay. Damn. Yeah. Right. Damn. He just does this. The Doctor's a stud. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cleopatra's info box. Um, for spouses: Mark Anthony, the Doctor. That's really good. It's really I love fucking that they funny. A, they have a fucking appearances list, and it's pr- probably every single fucking episode. <laughs> oh yeah, the appearances of the Doctor are yeah all of them. Yeah, appearances um, seal C list. Yeah, which I love. They're separate. It's not just like a huge chunk on their wiki page. It's a separate <laughs> page. It's like list of appearances for a character. This this wiki is amazing like platonic ideal of wiki they yeah, i would say this is a good wiki yeah. it's very wordy but that's not their fault it's doctor who's fault it's right doctor who's fault. it's extremely well categorized for such a bonkers series um and so i want to give all my love to the mods of this um also the thing i didn't mention about the regeneration is if I remember correctly, the the like the doctor species, the Gallifreyans, can regenerate like thirteen. I times. did not know they had a name. <laughs> they, they do. do. Because they, there was like a whole planet that he maybe killed. It's like a whole thing. It's like a whole um, thing. Yeah. I don't remember I exactly how that doctor was supposed who. to shake out because it was an episode Moffat wrote and I hated it. Oh, is that the one where the, the Daleks killed all of his people or whatever? It was the time. Maybe. War. <laughs> Probably. Um, we, we can. I can link so, you the page for the time war, and we can talk about that. We'll have. To, yeah. So we'll talk yes, about that. Yes, you've linked. Yeah. 
You've also linked this incredibly sad man called the War Doctor. And so the thing about the Doctor is the Doctor is supposed to regenerate 13 times, but there's also been many nebulously like out of time non can like non continuity doctors like mm-hmm. so i think that once like, they're not going to cancel doctor who once this 13th doctor is up they're just going to like come up with some bullshit and just be like here's another one yeah <laughs> because that's how this works mm-hmm. but i love you can almost feel the i'm hesitant to call it short-sightedness but like you got to imagine when they're in like the first or second iterations, they set some arbitrary time limit of 13 and they're like, we'll never oh, get yeah. there. <laughs> um, I mean, and now the show has like, typed for a while. And then everybody was like, we want it back. Yeah. So after, yeah. after the eighth doctor, it went dormant for like 20 or 30 years. Yeah. And then it fucking sprung back up. And so there's very much two eras of doctor who there's like, one through eight, which is 60s, 70s, I think. Um, and then there's nine through 13, which is 2009 to present. The the who that everybody was, like, into was largely the latter. Um, Alex, oh yeah, my god. Yeah, I, I feel like when it was, like, the Tumblr era, I feel like I mostly just saw David Tennant. It was primarily it, David I, Tennant because people like David Tennant for good reason. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah I literally I have my feelings um, about the in- every incarnation of the Doctor, which I'd like to go um, through just really quickly to give everybody a baseline of how I feel, um, <laughs> and also because I think it's fun to do this. Uh, so, our first our first post reboot Doctor number nine, Christopher Eccleston. He's not my favorite, but Christopher Eccleston hates the queen with <laughs> such a passion that I kind of have to respect him. That's the um, thing. I did not care for his doctor that much, but God damn, I respect Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> I think like his doctor had a lot of heart, but it was very rough on its feet. It was like the, f- it was like the first season post reboot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that I think he regenerated. Be a little rough. So, um, certainly not his fault. I think they had a hard time getting it back going. Yeah, it's not his fault that it was rough. Uh, number ten, I would date. I would die for David Tennant. So don't you forget it, bitch. Um, <laughs> and I think his companions were straight up the best. Mm-hmm. Rose was awesome. Donna was awesome. Martha was awesome. All of his companions were fucking awesome. Um, like I loved that he had a companion, Donna, who was a slightly older lady, and who he wasn't like romantically like into or whatever yeah, like don't they think were the just always just end up being love interests they quite don't often always quite they don't mm. always end up being love interests but quite often there's always a little something something going on <laughs> um and sometimes that works like i think that rose was a good love interest for the doctor i still think about liked... the like sliding down the wall separated by time and space oh it's really good actually <laughs> Yeah, like, they did a lot of really good work with Rose and the Doctor, but I loved that right after that, like, Donna was just this, like, fun 40-something lady that he hung out with, and it it was fun. It's a fun change of pace. She was tired of his fucking shenanigans. Yes, and also, um, in, just to talk about, uh, things that are not immediately Doctor Who, David Tennant and Catherine Tate, the actress for Donna, uh, were in a, uh, version of much ado about nothing Mm -hmm. where they played beatrice and benedict and uh, it's really fucking good is the thing good is the thing so it makes me even happier honestly knowing that they could have had like good romantic chemistry and they consciously chose not to do it i think it's really epic um and also you get a little tired of watching a thousand twenty something ingenues swoon over this like functionally immortal war criminal <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a little um 11 matt smith you poor little twig uh <laughs> Stephen moffat ruined your seasons it, <laughs> i mean it was like peak tumblr seasons mm-hmm. were matt smith to me like people really liked david Tennant, but like i associate matt smith Particularly because of its like, this fucker looks like, 
it's like fuckery and it was so like oh complicated and smart because that was when Stephen mm. Moffat took over as show writer um so 2010 to 2014 was his kind of reign. It has some bad episodes, the Pandorica, which I think I have to talk about because I think it, I think. Oh, sorry. I gotta stop to... you. I forgot that I'm always fucking stupid. I always think that Matt Smith is David Tennant. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So we, yeah. Okay. We were both in agreement, Rook, that Matt Smith was the king of, of Doctor Who Tumblr. Okay. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. To me, these are both the same men, even though they don't have the same facial structure. I was like, well, it's the same guy, obviously. It's David Tennant, both of them. (laughs) (laughs) That's, I mean, you were a little, you were a little more right than you thought, which is that they're both playing, they're both playing the same character. They're both the doctors. I I feel like I saw more David Tennant than I saw Matt Smith, but I did just, in my brain, I was like, yeah, Matt Smith is also David Tennant. Mm -hmm. It's okay, I do this too, and I watch the show. It had some bad, the Pandorica. It had some good, the Vincent Pango episode. I, mm, it's so good. I think if I watched it now, I would start sobbing. (laughs) Oh no. That's like the one episode Um, I think it would be worth to drag Rook through because we would all. Hey, I'll do it when I don't have a headache anymore. Yeah. Yeah, When you are, when you are in a good state, I think it would be worth dragging you (laughs) through. When my body stops trying to kill me. So um, number 12 I had stopped watching by this point <laughs> I'm okay uh, but Capaldi is a really cranky dude so I like that um, after a couple of incarnations of, of young men it was kind of nice to just get like a cranky grandpa um, <laughs> and then 13 I have absolutely not watched but they finally made the doctor a woman and Jodie Foster's signature outfit is really epic and cute she looks so good girl boss girl um, boss so, so like that's just my that's just my feelings um I'm very excited to get to talk about how Stephen Moffat, I think, single-handedly made me realize I don't like that. Sh- I didn't like the show anymore. <laughs> Go off. Get his ass. That's that's really how it feels. Um, mm-hmm. No, my I, I kind of chimed in, but I think we're largely in agreement where Tenet was probably my favorite because I like David Tennant. Um, I like David Tennant. He's very good. He's very good. I enjoy Broadchurch. I enjoy um, Doctor Who, Tenth Doctor. I like. David I enjoy Dunn. good go. I enjoyed Good Omens. I, I mean, <laughs> I enjoyed Good Omens a lot. <laughs> oh God, that's right. He was in Gomans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that could also be an episode someday. It could be. I think Good Omens would make. I never did finish the book, but that's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I could invite my sibling on. That could be fun. That would be very funny. They oh, are... God. I mean, if you're comfortable with that in there. Uh, they are a huge that would be hel- <laughs> That would be hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think I I had this two things to bring up if we had time, but I actually think I need to talk about it now or Go I'll ahead. die. Uh, is, is the Pandorica. Um Because I can't quite remember. I was looking through because I distinctly remember there was an episode that I was so fucking confused about over and over and over. Like, I had to keep pausing and be like, okay, wait, what's happening? Like, uh," and like piecing it together. And I remember thinking like in that moment, I was like, I don't think I like this show as much anymore. Mm. Like, that was the first time I'd watched an episode of Doctor Who and went like straight up like, this is bad. (laughs) And I can't quite remember if it was the pandorica opens which is the like second to last episode of season five or silence in the library which was the first episode where river song was and the thing about river song is i think you like you learn her story in reverse so i think she a, a bit of a beyond two souls it's a bit of a beyond two souls. It's hilarious that's your touchstone because I was going to say a bit of a Homestuck. I don't okay. remember Homestuck well enough. <laughs> so the problem is I was going to say a bit of a Rose Quartz. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think so we just did a CinemaSins think... speed run. <laughs> Where, like, I think the last thing, like, the first time you see her, she either dies or says she's about to die or something. And then as time goes on, like, she and the doctor are like an item, but they're running in parallel tracks. Like, he's moving forward in time and she's moving backwards. Mm-hmm. And so it's like Button. a whole fucking thing. Yeah. And so that's really confusing. And I think it might have been Silence in the Library. Um, but actually, when you it, have the wiki in front of you, you could look. 
I did look and I just I couldn't remember (laughs) what episode that was really confusing because I think they both are. But it doesn't matter because both of them are Stephen Moffat's fault. (laughs) I checked and he was showrunner by season five uh, and was obviously like writing, you know, the season premieres and season finales are for sure what he was writing. Um, But he was brought on as like he would write some episodes Mm -hmm. um, and some of the episodes he wrote were really good. Like, I think he did the first Weeping Angels one, Mm -hmm. which is incredibly well done, like contained. Did um, he also do the one where it is a very good companion is just talking to the doctor on the TV or was that someone else? companion was talking to the doctor on the tv I the only things i know about doctor who are because of h bomber guy you're you're thinking of th- um you're thinking of the weeping angels episode yeah that's the weeping oh. angels episode oh i didn't realize they were the same episode yeah yeah so i mean that's the that's one of the ones that that hair you know harris bomber guy brings up is to Stephen moffat can write like a single episode of like really good television it's a very good um, bottle episode <laughs> it's a great bottle episode but when they let him, like, do things that influence the plot, he made this insane, like, backwards, forwards, Benjamin Button, time twister motherfucker that doesn't make any goddamn sense. And that I think it took me, like, probably an hour and a half to watch this 45 minute show because I just had to keep pausing and be like, I don't understand what's fucking happening. And, like, <sighs> I was, like, I was halfway to, like, an insane Pepe Sylvia wall by the end of the episode <laughs> just to understand it. <laughs> And that was the moment where I was like, this is the first episode of this show that I've seen that was straight up, like, bad. It was fucking dog shit. And then by season five, he took over the show and was now, like, in charge of making, like, plot threads for everything. And that's when it begins to suffer extremely from the tune in next week and maybe we'll do something cool. (sighs) Where... It's just, oh, there's a crack in time and space. And we don't ever really do anything with that that's, like, cool or meaningful. We just keep seeing them. And it's like, woo, we have to deal with it at some point. And then the Pandorica is, like, a thing. And there's something bad inside. And uh, and and then every week somebody's like, the Pandorica! And then we just go to the next episode and nothing happens. And I think looking at the 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 sort of timeline, I think it was like Silence in the Library, which was a 10th Doctor episode. I was like, maybe the show is not as good as I thought. Got all the way through season five to the Pandorica opens. And I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> and I think that that was at some point through season six that I was like, I don't want to watch this show anymore. Mm. <laughs> I think that was sort of my timeline. So... It's all Stephen Moffat's fault. <laughs> He's a bad showrunner. <laughs> Do we know if he has his paws on anything new? Uh, or is he doing them for now? N- uh, so he got hands on a Dracula series because he is actually committed to ruining every okay. single one of Britain's important stories. Right. Um, yes, I know Bram Stoker was Irish, but, you know. Um, hey, I mean... No. <laughs> you shouldn't try to make political comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, where I think... I forget what insane thing he and or Mark Gatiss said where, like, he's not bisexual, but he'll drink blood from men what? And it was something what? insane what 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 they were like yeah they oh i wish i could fucking let me see if i can find it <laughs> i had no idea that this was even happening i didn't know that a dracula tv series was going to happen uh i think it already happened i think it's over what oh i didn't hear anything about I, it the last oh, dracula tv okay. series i remember hearing about was castlevania <laughs> <laughs> ah, BBC's new Dracula is, quote, bi-homicidal, not bisexual, according to the show's co-writer, Stephen Moffat. Okay. Yeah. So, that's, that's and the thing, thing about it, it's so normal. And the thing is, is, I think for so long, you know, there was Mark Gattis, who is gay, and so I think we were sort of convinced that 
things couldn't be homophobic. <laughs> but then I just remember that Ryan Murphy made Glee, and I think that maybe <laughs> it is po- it is possible for gay men to be homophobic. Or specifically, it seems in this case, biphobic. Yeah, all of bud. the time. Always. I don't want this to turn into another wiki boys discuss homophobia specifically about Glee, but if we ever do an episode about Glee, I got a lot to fucking say. I think we should, considering we lost the episode that we wanted to talk about Glee. That's true. (laughs) But, um, yeah, the thing about Doctor Who is that it's extremely bad, (laughs) Um, but also I think it didn't deserve to get grouped in with like supernatural because at its core it is just like stupid like campy sci-fi it is campy yeah, sci-fi I mean, it seems like it was originally just a weekly tv show for have put something on tv with you eat the meal of it you know <laughs> <laughs> uh despite the insane incongruence of that sentence i do get what you're saying like yeah Thanks. seasons one through four of like the reboot were very much like there was some continuity. There was some, like, story. Um, but it was also pretty easy to just drop it and, like, watch an episode, you know, yeah. with your with your meal. Um, and I think in many ways Doctor Who thrives best when it's just, like, let's do something crazy. Yeah. Like, all of the episodes of Doctor Who where they just, like, go back to some random time period and hang out there... It's fantastic. Yeah. There's there was an episode where they go to Agatha Christie. Great, and that one's it's cute. fantastic. It's a cute one. There's ones where they go back to Rome. Cute. I swear to God, they've hung out with Shakespeare before. Oh, they have for sure. I've they multiple had times. To. Why would you not? Probably yeah. Probably multiple times. Um, and those are fun. Or sometimes like when they talk about like. They just go to some weird alien planet, and then there's somebody with, like, an ugly facial prosthetic, and they're like, these are the Splendorfians, and they love cheese or whatever. Um, and that's just, like, the episode. Um, yeah, there hey, he is. There's what Shakespeare. Is up with, what's up with this fucking wiki hell looking drawing of William Shakespeare? <laughs> um... <laughs> Boy, it's really good. Um, the tenth doctor considered him the most human human that ever lived. I still don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, Fuck all other like, humans. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Um, also, I'm really enjoying that this page has the works of William Shakespeare <laughs> on it. <laughs> like, it's it's like a. It's such a weird, like, real biography of William Shakespeare, but also, like... The doctor's here. Shakespeare was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon. Cool. Factual about, you know, factual truth about um, William Shakespeare. Next paragraph. The fourth doctor claimed that Shakespeare as a boy was, quote, very taciturn, and that he said to him, there's no point in talking if you've got nothing to say. And it's like, oh, I'm in it, baby. Let's get into it. (laughs) I mean, that's the sort of insane thing that happens. And, like, that's how we get, like, oh, the doctor's spouse is Elizabeth the (laughs) First. They just do what they just... They just do it. They just do what they want. It's good. They just do it. It is um, campy, campy sci-fi, and it's fun. Yeah, it's fun, campy sci-fi. And I think, from what I've heard, the later Capaldi stuff and the Jodie Foster Doctor kind of get back to that, like, fun sci-fi romp. Um, you know, Moffat's not where, there anymore, right? Yeah, he's not, he's not on it at all because he's too busy <laughs> being... Uh, a fucking homophobe to Dracula of all people. (laughs) Um, But, you know, and and I think with so many shows that go off the rails, the showrunners don't like realize what's good about it. Like Supernatural goes off the rails when they realize it's not like a fun monster of the week, like comedy horror show. When it tries to be serious, it's not good. Doctor Who, when it tries to have a plot, it's not good. 
particularly when you let Stephen Moffat write that plot. And he just thinks he can, like, imply things are going to happen. It really um, sounds like Moffat writes the way that I write, which is bad. <laughs> yeah, and the big difference between you and Moffat is uh, you don't seem to get put in charge of shows all the time. Which is... No. Huh, imagine that. <laughs> Two people who are, uh, you know, fantastic writers, but one of them keeps getting put in charge of TV shows all the fucking time. I mean, let's be real. If I got put in charge of Doctor Who, hypothetically, I could probably make something better than Moffat, purely because I have fan fiction hands. Well, I don't have fan, I have fan content hands. I don't write you, fan fiction. Yeah, but. you have fan content hands, and you would also immediately make the Doctor a lesbian. Yes, of <laughs> course. So, I would. Yeah, I would like also you make would the am- Doctor transgender. Yeah. Well, I mean. All basically, all you have to do is just turn that subtext into text, baby. Like, yeah, um, just what I'm good I at. I do think it's also extremely funny that theoretically, at any point, the doctor can assume any form, and 13 times in a row, he was a white man, right? 12 times, 13th time, 13th time, he shook it up a little, just a little bit. Let's crack that egg more, baby. Math, <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think maybe the next doctor can just be non beanie. Um, but it's, there's just so much to talk about that's good and so much to talk about that's bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so many things I could talk about. Like I have like the enemies that the doctor faces, Jack Harkness, homo supreme. Um, and we've barely scratched the surface because doctor who is like this. Doctor who is um, like this. Yeah. This could be one that we could return to again. Absolutely. But what's most critical... I feel like we're about to stop. Alex hasn't even gotten through his list really yet. That I... Sh- this is, this is like, the most important thing that I show you from my list. Which is, this is apparently uh, the Twelfth Doctor's enemy. Um, yes. And it's the half-face man who I've never seen before yes. in my life. Um, he's, like, a fucked up site, like, fucked up steampunk robot. <laughs> this and... is one of Doctor's concept arts. Sometime just, in the 51st century. The Half-Face Man was a clockwork droid assigned to the SS Marie Antoinette sometime Ooh. in the 51st century with the mission of finding a fabled realm of paradise. Like, one of his one of his sections on his biography is harvesting organs. <laughs> I see that! Like... Uh, by Victorian times, the half-faced man had begun harvesting organs from humans in the city of London. This included the eyes from a man named Alf and the hands from two separate humans. Like, it's just... It's, it's high bonkers. Insane. It's high bonkers. And this is what I mean when it's like insane camp sci-fi. <laughs> is the half-faced man, the clockwork droid who steals body parts. <laughs> Um, and it's at one point just... also acquired Mancini's family restaurant and turned it into an organ harvesting factory. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> their organs were used guests... to repair their ship? Uh, that's, that's Doctor Who in the Who next paragraph of the beginner, when a dinosaur mysteriously appeared in the Thames. It's really... <sighs> I think that Wait, this sort harvest... of encompasses... Oh the the peak of like what Doctor Who is about, yeah. Um, oh, the, he dies. Uh, yeah, the the blowtorch hidden underneath his human hand. <laughs> Don't ask me how that works. <laughs> <It's fine>. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's just really special <laughs> to me. Oh. Um, and I'd never seen this before in my life. But, like, that's sort of the level of the Doctor's adversary. Oh, he's a Stephen Moffat original. He sure is. Um, Where they're just, like, all just, like, insane (gasps) robots. Like, nine times out of ten, they're insane robots, I I swear. Absolutely go for it. I wanted something really quite simple for the new Doctor to battle, because it's not really about the menace, stated (laughs) Moffat. And I wanted there to be some sort of echo. As a newly regenerated Doctor, he's meeting a man who's constantly rebuilding himself and can't really remember why. (laughs) <laughs> see the thing is i think that like i believe that harris bomber guy says this and i really echo this statement of like i think that Stephen moffat should be allowed to write pilots for shows yeah because he can come up with a lot of really cool plot threads and then take him off of it immediately and never let him touch it again yeah. and writers who are 
good at writing can take those ideas and develop it because like I kind of don't think he's wrong about like this newly regenerated doctor fighting just like a person quote unquote who's constantly rebuilding himself and that narrative foil intention do I think that that was handled well under Stephen Moffat's hands absolutely not I know he ruined that potential but a good writer could take that and make it really good and I feel like that's the like just what is up with Doctor Who is there's so many cool concepts that just get yeah. sort of mangled mm-hmm. and the, like I'm the, sitting on the... Clara Oswald's page right now and just thinking about how convoluted that got yeah, I think that maybe because we have a little bit of time left, I want to hear more about this because I never watched this season. And yeah, let I... Alex speak. No, my memory yeah, is I've also sort of... incredibly fuzzy, and this wiki is very, very big. It did not help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's valid. Um, but yeah, let's look at her. I remember thinking that she was cute. Um, and that was kind of all I knew about her. Hey, I, I am human doll time lord. Yep. I uh, yeah, I am noticing main alias is the doctor species human doll time lord. I see. Okay. Yeah, she was with him when he regenerated into his twelfth. Okay. Oh, I see. Having encouraged the time lords to grant him a new regenerative cycle. Ah. There we go. There's our <laughs> there's our workaround as to how we can have oh. more. <laughs> Just let me do it again. One more go. One more go. I think the twelfth. I think the twelfth one might have been a freebie. I think twelve was a freebie. That's fucking funny. Um, I'm also reading this sentence on her second paragraph. This caused the time winds to shatter her into millions of what River Song referred to as quote echoes or splinters that were dispersed throughout his personal timeline. Okay. <laughs> Um, right, yeah, so her entire existence is tied to the Doctor in unsatisfying ways. <laughs> Are we surprised? Nope. No! <laughs> um, the really one thing that I remember about her is that there is a reveal very late in her storyline that she has basically been a Dalek this entire time when she's trying to okay. talk yeah, when she's trying to talk to the doctor through weird convoluted methods. Um, they're, like, talking back and forth through some kind of, like, communication device. And at the very end, it kind of pans out when you realize she had been a doll, like, completely unaware that that's what happened to her. Okay. Okay. Can Daleks disguise themselves as humans? Is that, like, a thing? No. no. So the thing about Daleks no, is the, the like, cheese grater robot with the egg whisk on it is, like, a <laughs> fucked up mech suit for a weird wrinkled baby alien in the middle. What? Yes. Yeah. I thought they were just robots. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> what the hell? They are um, an alien species inside of whisk. Aww, I thought beholden, they were just robots. <laughs> whisk and plunger beholding uh, <laughs> mecha suit. Aww. Thank you for grabbing this. I really need to see if I can find a picture of one of them cracked open with a little freaky dude inside. Um, They're bad to look oh at. Oh my god. They're so bad to look at. Please Which is why they them. are uh, normally just holding a whisk yeah, and a it looks like it, I'm, I'm seeing something that looks like it's from... This doesn't look like it's live action. What is this? I can't tell what media this is. <laughs> it looks like a head crab. I think it's it, a poorly drawn comic. It could also be a photo that's had a filter applied to it. Oh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here's a picture of the Dalek Emperor and with his, like, panels unlocked where you can see that he's a freaky little alien. Oh, um, so small. But yeah. yeah, and so I think it's funny that they... The Daleks also just are sort of an inherently goofy-looking... Um, mech suit uh, with the egg beater and a They plunger. absolutely look like something from the 60s. Yes. And I think that that's very special, which is you can tell which things are holdovers from the 60s because they don't ever <laughs> yeah. really look any better. That's like, good. The, pr- the props objectively got better created, but the Daleks aren't any 
better. But yeah, it's just sort of like a trash bin on wheels that is like exterminate and I'm supposed to be scared of that. Like it's really funny. They're very Doctor funny. Who is a funny Doctor Who is a funny show. <laughs> And I remember dad always used to sort of like needle me about liking it because the um, when I think at some point when he was younger, the old episodes must have come on. And if you can imagine what sci fi was like in the 60s and 70s, oh, yeah. it was bad. And so he's like, all I remember is there was some alien that looked like it had fucking noodles taped to its face. <laughs> And that sort of soured his whole view on Doctor Who, which looking back, I was really mad about because I was like into Doctor Who. But I think that's a fair. Yeah, I think that's a fair. Yes, this thing. Yes, I remember this. The Dalek mutant, which is just this pile of flesh with an eye in the middle. Ew. Um, okay. It's awful to look at. And I think this is that might have been the one where it was like you would oh, make a yeah. good Dalek. That's all I remember. Yeah, that's... Um, I... It's a very interesting um, uh, episode because it's basically talking about how the Doctor is really fucked up and a war criminal and basically yeah. super shitty. And he ends up being face-to-face -face with one of the little blobs that are inside the Daleks. And, he, and they look at each other and realize, oh, but we're both super shitty fucking, like, beings. <laughs> mm-hmm. This terrible think... flesh mound really just looks like what like a live action doom that I watch might look like. <laughs> That's <laughs> this, this is Shadow the Hedgehog thing. That's uh, that's true. But I also think like when you go back and you look at the Ninth Doctor, I think that's one of the ways where it really like grappled with the fact that not super like explicitly that like he was a war criminal, but it was like the Doctor is really inherently about a story about somebody who long ago in his past did horrible horrible things and spends 13 iterations trying to do good to make up for it and only some of the iterations want to deal with that and number nine was really one of the iterations that wanted to deal with that sorry i have to take my brother to work okay. um so we can either wait till I get back or we can wrap up super quick. Let's wrap up super quick because we only have okay. 12 minutes left on the timer anyway. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's valid. Um, this is... But you could also I, like Jet and then Alice could just talk through his list if, if we want to do that. <laughs> if we so desire. Um, um, I think that would be incredibly valid. A treat for to, when you get to edit. <laughs> yeah, a treat for when I get to edit. Um, I will then leave you with my final thoughts... Save about the world. Doctor Who. Um, my <laughs> my final message changed the world. Um, <laughs> no, I think that Doctor Who was a lot of fun. And I wish that I had been a little bit smarter about like not taking it seriously. Because I think I probably would have enjoyed it for a lot longer. Um, mm -hmm. And whenever Stephen Moffat tried to throw some insane bullshit at me, if I was just like, no. <laughs> hey, I mean, you could always uh, binge yeah. watch Doctor Who after you finish Supernatural. Are you trying to give me terminal cancer? <laughs> because I think that, that would give me. <laughs> I think you would. I, I think just... you would kill them. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that's my final message. Change. Change to TV. Fuck like, them off. At. Don't fuck, fuck, fuck them off. At change. Change to TV. Um. And I don't take. Don't. If you're a teenager, don't take your TV so, shows so seriously. You'll enjoy them a lot more. <laughs> Um, we realize that they are just kind of trash sometimes. You'll have a better time. They're sometimes just kind of sometimes intentionally consuming garbage is okay. It's okay to do this. Um, okay. Bye. 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 See you last. See y'all later. Good boy. We will continue here. We will continue here. Actually, I don't have that much more to talk about because I kind of just went through the chronologic stuff of yeah, what I... I just wanted to let you like wrap up yeah i'll let you wrap up um i had a couple Instead things of... i wanted yeah. to hit on i wanted to hit on rose tyler because i like rose tyler a mm. lot i think she was a very you can very just talk good about companion. rose yeah go ham go ham um so 
she is another one of those characters who entire existence kind of wraps around the doctor because that's how mm. this has to work. Yeah, she's like the big love interest, isn't she? She was the big love interest. Um, but she also got to have this cool identity called Bad Wolf, where she basically <laughs> like went through time and tried to just like meet up with the ninth doctor. Oh, fuck um, yeah. So as you watch the Ninth Doctor series, you see these little signs throughout the entire thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, as soon as they planned it, they started putting in the little um, segments here and there. You can see it on some walls um, mm. and, like, as graffiti in some places. Um, but, yeah, she pretty much just, like, goes wibbly wobbly through time what has it has said um <laughs> i had to have one i had to have one and i wasn't gonna let aster take it from me um and it, it, it it's fun trash television mm. um because it is a very satisfying moment where you get to flash back and see um how it these like things are season. It was rewatchable. Like, I went back and I saw a couple because I was interested in the little flashbacks they showed. Um, and it was fun. Why not? <laughs> Why uh, does there an image of her with no face? Rose loses her face to the wire. Boy, howdy. That was probably something that happened. Uh... <laughs> The wire was an energy being that, according to the Tenth Doctor, took the essence and souls of the television-watching population of Great Britain in 1953. Oh! During the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Right. What the fuck? So, this was an episode where they went back in time to the date that Queen Elizabeth was coronated. Uh, because everybody was watching the TV all at once, there was some kind of alien thing that was like, hmm, this seems like a good opportunity to okay. just be evil. <laughs> and um, basically was, like, technology bad. Okay. <laughs> oh, I trapped the wire on a Betamax tape. Whoa. Yeah. What a dated sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You would tape over it just to be safe. <laughs> God. What a weird series. It's it's like this. It's this weird, dumb, campy shit. I wish there could be, like, another one of these that's not made of cringe hell. Yeah. There's definitely some out there. Yeah, but... there's probably some the other. I feel like it's hard to have something like this to start now, because... People aren't... New stuff is hard to invest in, mm -hmm. and shows are made to make money, so if you think it's not gonna... That's why, like, most TV series now only end up getting, like, two to four seasons before they end up being cancelled or just dying. Yeah, I think probably what happens is this type of camp sci-fi is a pretty niche market nowadays, so... Yeah. If you want, like, Netflix or something to pilot it. Um, yeah. Your chances some, are low some, unless it's can attached some, can to some something. Student, yeah, can some film students just, like, go crazy and make a YouTube series for me? <laughs> for you particularly? You. There's definitely something just, out there. I think we would just need to find it. Yeah. I feel like I feel like it's easier to get stuff like this out of, like, comics these days. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like comics are, like... Of course, I'm not making a, a comment on, like, the effort put into them, but it's, like, it's less of a monetary risk in terms of, like, buyer's eyes. And even and you, like, self-publish a comic pretty easily. Yeah, the upstart is a lot lower. Yeah. But with TV, it's like... <sighs> yeah, with TV, you have to pay multiple, multiple actors. You have to pay an entire crew. You have to get it, like, serialized. You're risking millions. <laughs> yeah. For a comic, conceivably one person can do it. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do after this was kind of go through some of the series hallmarks that we missed. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll go for the namesake of the wiki first. 
What? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay, we're gonna talk about. Okay, we want to talk about the TARDIS. We can talk about the TARDIS. Would you like to talk All about right. the TARDIS? <laughs> because, um, so we we talked about how the Doctor regenerates every time, but mm. another part is that the TARDIS also changes. Besides being oh, I assumed it was just like the same. I mean, I know it blows up a few times. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Uh, it does do that, but, um, like, the, the TARDIS itself is not, um, it's a device, not a singular object. Oh. Like, the, there exist other Time Lords with other TARDISes. Like- I don't know why I assumed it was just a British phone box all the time forever. <laughs> uh, because the Doctor's is. <laughs> okay. Um, the Doctor's is always this blue police box. Oh, right, it's a police box, not a... Yeah. Um, the inside of it changes with each Doctor, because it's fun to do a setup grade. And kind yeah. of, like, wipe the slate clean, which is why the cover image for um, it on the wiki does not look like anything that you <laughs> saw in the 1 through 6 Um of the current season, the current incarnation. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch. I'm just scrolling this page, looking at the pictures. There's a whole bunch of different tardises. There are a whole Tardis bunch of different tardi. <laughs> Seeing one that looks like a snacks and gas. Which, <laughs> yeah, like there's, there's, there's different ones for different uh, Gallifreyans. I wonder how many people have Doctor Who OCs. I don't know. That's a great concept. There I... must be at least two people. <laughs> at minimum. There's got to be two people that made original Doctors. Um, Probably not original Doctors, because the Doctor is, like, a semi-defined well, that's true. character. I was they more thinking about, like, how there's, I guess, original people that have TARDIS eye. There's probably people who have, like, original Gallifreyans and Time Lords. Yeah, yeah. Which I guess I meant Time Lords, not Doctors. Yeah. No, Time Lord is a, a weird phrase because it's like a... Um, I had it I had it um, on my list as well because the cover image makes me go fucking insane. Um, oh, well, I can look at it at least. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this looks like sci-fi drag show apparel. It absolutely looks like sci-fi drag. Um, but yeah, the, the Time Lords were a, like, um, profession? Okay. Uh, sort of, of Gallifreyans, which is the species of, uh, what the Doctor is. <laughs> so Sorry, I just scrolled, I scrolled down the Time Lord page and... So this wiki is like it's it's a blue background and then and there's some quotes that are just in white boxes so they really stick out. Mm -hmm. So I scrolled down and immediately saw biological sex is flexible among my people and gender is merely a social construct from the 13th doctor. Thank you. Thank girl you boss. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you girl boss. Yeah, I don't know anything about Jodie Foster's doctor. But I think it's mm -hmm. pretty poggers. I, I don't know anyone that's watched that season. I don't, I really don't know any people but I do, I don't either. Which is strange because I see people on my timeline watching bullshit that I've never heard of before. <laughs> just happy. Maybe to you should watch the Thirteenth Doctor season. Perhaps. Get some brain rot in you. Mm. More of it. <laughs> I would have to find where to watch it because it's mm. now weird. Um, right. We already talked about Daleks. I don't want to talk about Silence because they're kind of weird. If people listen to this and like oh you didn't talk about the silence i'm like oh, fuck you it's just it's it's this... weird and bad that's a moffat thing right i believe so there goes my timer mm -hmm. um so the one thing that i know you have seen is the weeping angels which are yeah i'm, I'm spoiling the link for you because it's creepy oh okay um oh yeah which Mostly because I like the way that they are described. Um, the first paragraph is, uh, The Weeping Angels were an extremely powerful species of quantum-locked humanoids. Mm -hmm. um, 
I love the description of quantum locked. <laughs> that sounds like something you would steal. It does seem like something I would steal because it's put that in your cowboys. I could put that in. I could put that in a thing that I make. <laughs> um. But it, the the whole premise is they only can move when you don't look at them. So they're kind of the opposite. Yeah, it's a really cool and good premise for a budget show. It is fantastic. Also, um, fun fact, um, uh, Angel sometimes took the form of even bigger statues, such as the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty is a weeping angel. Okay. Which, you know, why not? Why? Damn, not? imagine if you fucking, you're just fucking around making a statue and then it comes to life and snaps your neck. <laughs> yeah, so the, the funny thing about the Statue of Liberty being a weeping angel is that somebody is always looking at it, so you would never know. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> That's the whole joke. That's pretty good. Um, I find it very humorous. <laughs> I wonder how many statues you could just be like, yeah. You'd just be like, yeah, someone's already looking at it, so it's it's a weeping angel now. Sorry. Oh, apparently there's Doctor Who stuff in Lego Dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to get into this. I just saw there was Lego Dimensions and was like, what? Uh, um... No, those were those were kind of the major things that I wanted to hit. Um, yeah. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because Aster is the impetus of this show. <laughs> <laughs> she does keep the grease rolling. She does keep the grease rolling. God bless her. She could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I could, but I'm nerfed right now, mm -hmm. and also I don't know anything about Doctor Who. It, it's like this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can anticlimactically end. We now can anticlimactically end. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to do the outro because Aster and I did intro? Yeah. Uh, uh, this has been Wiki Boys. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Wiki Boys Pod. You can find me on Twitter at Toadwing. You can find me on Twitter at, at Alex and Mostly Okay. And you can find Aster on Twitter at, at Nerd of Goodness. Yes, I was going to do that. Thank you. Okay, Thank delight. you for listening. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> The music used in this episode is Quirky Dog by Kevin McLeod, found at incomptech.com and used under the Creative Commons license.